good morning everyone today we will be doing experiment number 3 for experiment number 3 i have already given you the data in data sheet 2 uh, in today's experiment we will be converting a given topo sheet into an actual map and also digitalizing it that is converting it into a vector sheet that is point line and polygon uh, for this we will be using a geo reference plugin uh if it is not there as a part of your uh, installation you can always select it from plugin that is just go to manage and install plugins and in that it will it is a part of installed and if it is unchecked just you can check it uh, for the version that i'm using it's already a part of it and it is available as a part of raster as you can see so the data i have already extracted and kept it on my desktop so i'll start with geo referencing because that's a part scanned part of a map and we need to add the coordinates to it so for that i'll go to the file open raster so i'll go to the desktop in desktop there is a folder which i have shared and in this you need to open this nh4 cut jpg open open raster windows desktop yeah jpeg file this is a jpeg file i need to yeah so this is the file that you have select and once you uh, you can uh, start with either uh, delete a point Um, uh, move GC point, and uh, you can add a GC point. So once I click on add, uh, my cursor converts into a plus. So I'll be just uh, zooming into this topo sheet, and as you can see, this point it is already given. What are the coordinates in the map? I just click on it, and it asks for the east, that is x coordinate, and y the north coordinate. So the it is seventy eight degrees, and the north is thirty degrees. Okay, okay. And then what we will be doing is again we will be repeating it for the other point. So as we can clearly see, it is seventy eight degrees. Thirty minutes, which is equaling to seventy-eight point five degrees in the east, and uh, the y coordinate remains the same. That is thirty. Okay. Now, similarly, we will uh, we will go to point number four and three, and add the geo referencing point. So I'll just zoom into this particular point, and you can see it is thirty. Degrees thirty minutes, so that is an east is seven now east is seventy eight degrees. So I just put these coordinates. So it is thirty point five. Okay. Now similarly, I can do it for point number four, and I can just zoom into the part which I want to actually do the geo reference. So add point. I'll just go and click here. So it will ask me for the coordinate. So I know it is seventy-eight point five degrees, and north it is thirty point five degrees. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, normally, when where sometimes we will find that as soon as you open the geo reference, it asks you for the um, the coordinate system that you'll be selecting. In case it is not asking by default, it is taking that of a QGIS window, that is uh, EPSD four three two six. Okay, so you can save these points. And uh, on the sheet as JPEG point, so I can just name it as one, and 
save it on the desktop. So it's saved it there and you can uh, use it whenever you want. So I can close it. Now what we will do is Now we will close this file. Yeah. We can always zoom out. Okay. We can zoom out and Uh -huh. Before zooming out, what we have to do is we have to uh, do certain settings before we uh, zoom out. So what we have to do is go to transformation settings. In transformation settings, uh, these are certain default values that even ask you for the target uh, SRA. Uh, output raster in case uh, I want to select it. So what I'll do is in my desktop folder only, I'll just select it. It will be saved as a text file. So it is experiment number three text file I'm saving with that. So it will be location is fixed. Save GPT point. And you can press yeah, you can check this load in CGIS when done and press OK. Once this is done, what you have to do is this green button is for georeferencing or you can go to the file and say start georeferencing. So please load the raster to be georeferenced. So this is my raster. Okay, what I have done is transformation setting. Output file have selected. So once you have actually done all your georeferencing and uh, done the setting, transformation setting as I told you, by selecting the position where this raster file dot text file will be stored, you will just go to the file and start georeferencing. So this georeferencing will be done and it will be automatically loaded into your QGIS file and you can close this georeference. Uh, I have done it twice, so I'll just remove this layer, one layer. So what does this georeferencing does is the scanned file that we have taken as an input, and you can see that as I'm moving the hand, you can see the coordinates are moving. That itself says that every point has been given a location. And this is how we convert the old map into we convert the old maps into the digitized data now what we will be doing next in this is we will just zoom into a particular area and try to digitalize that area and convert it into dots points and polygons this is the old topo sheet of dehradun and uh, this is uh, uh, this i got it from the uh, Isro Dehradun site mm, and what we'll do is we'll just uh, zoom into this particular area so that we can do some digitalization of uh, some regions forest area and the roads so what we will do is we will select this area So we'll select, the, uh, make some roads using the lines. There are some locations there, localities there. We'll use the points to represent them. And these green patches are the forest, reserve forest, um, and the other areas which we'll be using the polygons to do it. 
Now what we will do is we'll start with the uh, making the point file. For that, uh, in the last practical also we have learned that you should go to the create layer, new shape file. Now name the file, so I'm naming it as places. What is the geometry type? I'm first making a point file. We need to select the coordinate system. I'm selecting what I'll be having the fields. You can have name and add field. So it will have two fields. One is number and the other is the name. You can press OK. Now, uh, as soon as I make this, this toggle editing button is activated. I'll just click on it on the points and start editing. So I can see some uh, locations as Raipur. So I'll just click here, <coughs> give it ID number one, name it as Raipur. So I'm creating the attribute table. So there is one point that is created. Then uh, I see one uh, point as um, Bharuwala. I'll just click here and one and sorry, two and make it okay. Then there is Kalan. I'll just click it here three. Colon, press OK. Then uh, there is Gujran Valley 4. I'll just give it the name as I see it in the map. OK. Uh, then there is one place, Adaiwala. I'll just click it here, file, and I name it Adhoiwala and press OK. So my point file is created. I'll just press on this to stop editing. So I'll have to save. Please remember to save it, otherwise, this file you cannot access it. I can just uh, remove the stick to see whether I have created. Yes, you have created the files and as you are moving this, you can clearly see the coordinates are moving because it's a part of the topo sheet which has been given the coordinates. So I'll again take it back. Now what I'll do is I'll be making the roads. So for making the roads, again I'll go to the layer, create layer. Now it will be new spatial layer. I'll name it as roads. And I'll give the geometry as line. I'll, these roads are given some names. So I'll give it as name and add it to the field and press OK. Now what I'll do is, I uh, start editing again for making it more clear. It's always better to zoom into the area to have a better clarity of what you are trying to digitalize. Now we our editing tool is activated. Then with that you press online, and then you start by clicking left click wherever you want to change it. Now this is uh, the main road. So I'll just right click on it to close this line. So I'll name it as main road one. Okay. And uh, then I have the second road from here. I'll just try to keep it as near to the line which I see. Now right click here and I'll name it as main road 2. 
road to now in this very important thing is that there, there is one road from here to here which is joining if we try to do it directly there is a possibility that we actually do not test because these dimensions are so small so what we do is we use a tool called as snapping tool which you get in the project option so here what you have to do is what it does is it automatically connects it whenever it is near so that you are actually connected rather than being disconnected so enable snapping so the layer we will be selecting is the active layer this is the distance between the two pixels that is 12 pixels it will automatically snap that is it will attract as you can see with the symbol it's a vertex that we are using Mm, overlaps are to be uh, we don't avoid overlaps on the active layers we just want it to be just touching no overlaps are required so i have just switched it on and now i want to start from this point so as you can see there is a pink dot that you see which is right click and press joining road okay now i just want to show it like how i have joined these two this is the because of snapping tool whenever there are differences of less than 12 pixel, pixels it automatically Uh, brings it to the point on a road. Suppose I want to make. Suppose there is a road from here. I'm just starting. I'm just taking an alley. You can clearly see now as as I come near to the main road one. Automatically, there is The, at the edge here yeah, at the vertex there will be a, a snapping tool that will be activated as soon as, as i want to as i want to remove it i can always so if there is another option like a segment so anywhere on the segment if you want it to add you can always select the way i was not able to connect here because uh, it was only at the vertex that the snapping tool was activated now you can see as soon as i bring near the segment again you can see a pink dot that is activated right here and yeah you can close it say road five try okay now what we have to do is close the editing tool so save this file so this saves it now again we will check our topo sheet and uh, now what we have to do next is uh, digitalize this green patches that is the forest area uh, this for that this i'll be using a polygon so again go to create layer new shape layer so i'll be naming it as forest and the geometry type will be polygon and i'll be naming them giving a name to it add to the scene okay and uh, my toggle tool is activated my polygon i have to select and say i'm just trying to make this polygon by clicking on the boundary i'll try to keep it as near to the boundary now once i have completed right click give it a name say this is forest 1 and press okay so you can see that particular area is visible now again i'll be doing it for this reserved forest 
So one thing that I'll do is try to As soon as my area is covered, I'll just say reserved forest. Okay. Now what I have to do is I have to again digitalize this particular area. So there is a possibility that there could be an overlap. And as a rule of uh, making your vector files in uh, GIS, there should be no overlap. So same polygon and two polygons should not be overlaying on each other. So what we'll do is again we have taken uh, we'll be using our snapping tool that is for the active layer. Uh, we will enable our snapping tool, select the app. Now, what do you want? You want uh, the area, no overlaps you want. And as soon as you come 12 pixels, it should be. So what I'll be doing is I'll start from, say, here. To show you an example that I'm just trying to overlap and what it does is, and right click and say this is reserve forest 2. And press OK. Now what do you see is these two areas, they are distinct. I can just uh, uh, click on this. And these two are distinct and there is no overlap. I don't have to go line point by point to select it. Automatically, the snapping tool helps us to do it. So once this is finished, I'll again uh, close my toggle to save. And uh, this is not required. You can always keep it here or close it also. Once this is done, I'll just uncheck my modified and this is what is the parts you have. Now you know how to be actually um, uh, naming and making a map using this vector point and uh, polygon. So we'll be just, we can repeat that. So we know how to do it is we'll be using this properties symbology. So symbology we will be using and uh, you, you can always uh, go to the categorized and as per the name for every name I want a different sign here I'll say classify so there are five uh, regions I'll be just removing this uh, additional file by this delete button and I can even change the symbol right now I'm just using a different color apply and say okay I can even give it the names the way we did it in our experiment number one. And I can go to the properties and I can 